for an answered second half goal. Separated Trinidad and Tobago from St. Vincent and the Grenadines on the first day of the Digicel qualifying series. TNT saw St. Vincent equalize twice before moving on to a 6 2 win with Devon Jostling scoring a hat trick. Um, this is the coveted trophy the Caribbean teams are going after. It was St. Vincent and the Grenadines with the first chance, a Chandel Samuel shot stopped by Jean Michael Williams. But seconds after the giveaway from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Devon Jostling capitalized 1 0. TNT's defense had its problems. Chandel Samuel here making it 1 1. But in the 35th, Jostling put TNT ahead once more. The defense for striker with a low creeper from just outside the box. However, on the stroke of halftime, Cornelia Stewart had TNT's defense on the back foot. A well taken strike from Stewart, and the game was all square two at halftime. Second half substitute Kerry Batiste was on spot here in the 57th to turn in a Lester Peltier cross. Trinidad and Tobago back in front. And this time there would be no St. Vincent comeback. Jostling with a cracking shot, his hat-trick goal, 4-2. 67th minute from the free kick, the initial save by goalkeeper Sandy. And the Batiste on spot to tap in the rebound, TNT leading 5-2. Hutton Hector scored in the dying seconds to round out a 6-2 win for Trinidad Tobago. Four goals from the Soka Warriors in the second half. Note the improvements advised from senior head coach Russell Atapi after that win over St. Vincent and the Grenadines in their Digicel Cup qualifying opener. Latapi expressed some concerns, however, about TNT's defense. More from Jassy Marik. Sometimes when you lose, it's a good thing. It helps us to concentrate better, which we didn't you know, in the second half. And hopefully we could, you know, it's a carryover. What I explained to them, you know, we still have two games remaining. I mean, if we can, you know compete against Trinidad so closely, especially in the first half. I think, you know, we were able to do well with our two remaining games. But TNT head coach Russell Latapi gave the Vincentians much less credit than Carrington claimed. He put TNT's poor first half showing down to lapses in concentration by his inexperienced backline. There was a, a lot of young players who, you know, were playing in front of, of the home fans for uh, for the first time in a long while and, and maybe they were a bit nervous and we had a, a few defensive lapses um, in the first half and we, we were able to rectify that in the second half and we moved the ball a bit better, our passing was a bit better, our movement was a bit better. The magician who has been mandated to steer TNT out of this group and all the way to the Caribbean Cup title is looking forward to clashes with the much more disciplined Guyanese and Haitians with fervor. They look like uh, two very organized teams, you know, it would be uh, interesting coming up against them. We played Guyana not too long ago um, over there and we got a draw. Um, you know, I, I don't want to give too much away, but the, the reality is we're playing at home and we try to play attacking football as best as we can and score goals um, and entertain the fans. And I think that's what we'll try to do on Thursday and on Saturday as well. Reporting for CNC Three Sports, I am Jassy Marik. Meanwhile, last night's hat trick hero Devon Jostling has dedicated his goals to longtime friend and Defence Force comrade Kevon Carter. Injured Defence Force swinger Carter would more than likely have played among the starters in TNT's lineup last evening had it not been for his broken legs sustained recently. Jostling said, quote, I said before that each time I score a goal for Trinidad and Tobago in this tournament that it would be for Kevon because I know he would have been playing had it not been for the injury and he got three tonight. I think it puts a smile on his face because he was in the dressing room for us. Hopefully it will help him mentally in his recovery as well.